Joyce Breakfast Show, thanks to calmrnt.com.au, where you can hold a piece of history in your hand. Yeah, it's eight minutes to seven, eight to six in Queensland. I think everyone knows I'm a hard marker. I've got a bloke here beside me now who really has an enormous contribution to make to the community and has made it. Matthew Dickerson is a former Dubbo mayor, five years. He ran as an independent. There's a whole background of that which I won't go into for the seat of Dubbo at this year's state election following the resignation of Troy Grant, who was on the nose because of the whole Greyhound episode. He won 48% of the vote without the support of a major party. Narrowly lost to the Nationals, who voted National, but the swing against them was over 18%. Matthew Dickerson sport speaks to small business and farmers every day. He was the person who organised the fundraiser for Lifeline when I came to speak here earlier in the month, earlier in the year, and it was then that I found out they needed a home, a permanent home. They didn't have it. So we eventually got, went back to town, talked to the government, and we got the 600,000 bucks, so they're going to have a permanent home for this critical service. And I'll talk about that later in the program. But I wanted to talk to him today very briefly about this critical issue of water. He's done a stack of homework on this. Dubbo's water supply largely relies on the Burundong Dam, which is about an hour from here south, and it's three times the size of Sydney Harbour. Burundong Dam. Currently, the water level's 3.1%. And their claims, there are claims that towns like Dubbo and Tamworth could be out of water in the coming months. But that talk, as you can imagine, has an enormous impact on business and tourism. And can I say to people, wherever you're listening to this across Australia, this is a beautiful, I'm not saying this because I'm in Dubbo. I've been here before, I've said all this before. I don't think people in Dubbo appreciate what a beautiful city this is. Magnificent. They've got everything. This place contributed to that as the mayor, of course. So these sorts of comments about the fact we're running out of water, you're going to have no water, is damaging to tourism. The former Mayor Matthew Dickerson is with me. Good morning. Look, it's damaging to more than just tourism, Alan. You've got damage to a whole range of businesses that you wouldn't necessarily think are involved in tourism. So retailers are being impacted, obviously moteliers. You've got restaurants not getting bookings because people are scared that they're not going to have water in there. And this, this messaging that's been put out, probably largely by our local council, which is disappointing, about lack of water or running out of water or day zero, you're absolutely spot on. The damage that's doing to our economy is huge. What's the answer? Well, the answer is, first of all, get the facts out there, get the data out there. And, and you mentioned 3.14 per cent is the dam level at the moment. The dam is 1,188 gigalitres at normal capacity, but it can go over. It can go up to 1,688 gigalitres. That's a lot of water. And then you talk about the water licences. So our river, we've got eight gigs of licences from our river and four gigs from our bore. So that's 12 gigs of licences we've got. Dubbo uses maybe seven to eight gigalitres a year. So we've got ample water. State government said you should cut back to 80% or, or, or the licence was cut back to 80% from your river. So you're back to 6.4 gigs. Even with that cut back, you've still got 10.4 gigs of water. That's a huge amount of water when the community only uses seven to eight. So getting the correct information out there, and, and thank you for letting me come on and talk Not to you today, all. getting that correct information out there to your listeners to say that we've got enough water, we've got ample water, you can turn on the... But what's the agenda if you're pro-Dubbo to frighten the hell out of people that we're going to run out of water? What's the agenda? Well, that's a question I can't answer. It's something that we've seen. It's something that the, the national media has been a part of in, in terms of uh, promoting some of those ideas. But really, the, the message is we've got enough water because we've built the infrastructure. Back when I was on council, we spent over $20 million on a water treatment plant. We made sure we had the bores. We made sure we had the licences to make sure we've got a community going forward very strongly. And unfortunately, when you get this incorrect messaging, that has a huge impact on our community. And the other huge impact is the people uh, in the outreaches of Dubbo, then, and we're talking about the farmers and the drought and so on. How are you reading that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I did a, a charity ride only a month ago, and we rode out through Burke, out through Lightning Ridge, out through Cobar, and it looks absolutely devastating when you look at some of those. You see farmers rounding up sheep on dust bowls and you just wonder where they're going to get any food from. So there's no doubt about that. There's devastation in those areas, but it doesn't help anyone by having more of an impact in those individual communities than you need to. And, and obviously those individual communities are being impacted by these farmers not spending money. But Dubbo is a city that only has 2.5% of its employment from the agricultural sector. So we've got enough other industries to keep us going. 14.4% of our employment is in retail. We've got these other great industries. So there's no need to unfairly or unduly penalise the Dubbo business community because that has an impact on all those farms in the area as well. How smart is this bloke? Just, you're outstanding. I said that before. We had this function for Lifeline. 
He ran the whole show. It was just magnificent. Just a final word there for, because you're not talking to Dubbo, we're talking to people beyond Dubbo about water. But, well, I think there's been some mismanagement of, of water as well, just simple things. So we, we've had things like a, a thermal pollution curtain that was installed at Burrandong Dam. When you take water from the bottom of the dam, you put cold water into the river. For 160 kilometres of the river, you damage the native fish species because they can't breed in the cold water. You take a, a thermal curtain, put it on, that makes sense. They put one on in 2014. It's been out of action more often than it's been in action. It's still not operating properly. I mean, at the moment, it's irrelevant because there's not enough water there. Mm -hmm. But simple things like that. Uh, fish screening, you've got people... But basically, Dubbo, the, 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 this notion about we're going to run out of water is oh, nonsense. Yeah, absolute, nonsense. Absolute nonsense. So get to Dubbo. Get to Dubbo, yeah, visit when, Dubbo. When you come to Dubbo, don't accept a ride from Matthew Dickinson. He drives like Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> and on that note, we'll thank you for that. Pat. Good to see you. Thanks, Alan. It's two minutes to seven, two to six in Queensland. The UK reports. That's the... <laughs> 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 <laughs>